In real life physics and math problems, we need to deal with radicals, or square roots sometimes. It's helpful to know how to set up these kinds of equations because they come up a lot. It's really no different from setting up any other kind of equation, but it can be a little bit tricky to solve. So we can get some kind of idea how to figure those out. Pendulum problems come up a lot in math and physics, and they involve a square root. The period of a pendulum is just the time it takes for it to swing back and forth one time. And it's shown by this formula. t equals 2 pi times the square root of l divided by g. t is the time in seconds of the period, l is the length of a pendulum, and g is acceleration due to gravity, which is 9.8 meters per second on Earth. We just need to know how to plug in the values to solve for any of these variables. We can say that we have a pendulum with a period of two seconds, and we're trying to find the length of that pendulum. If we're trying to find the length, that means that we need to solve for L. We know the other variables. T is two here, and that equals two pi times L, which we're trying to fi find, divided by 9.8, the gravity. We need to get L by itself on one side of the equation, and the first way, the first thing we need to do is divide by 2 pi. Now we get 2 divided by 2 pi equals the square root of L over 9.8. But how do we get rid of that radical sign? It's kind of in the way. We need to square both sides to cancel out the radical sign. So everything squared on both sides is going to give us 1 over pi squared equals L over 9.8. Now we don't have a radical sign anymore, so it's easier to solve. All we have to do is cross multiply to get 9.8 equals L times pi squared, and then 9.8 divided by pi squared equals L. If we plug that into a calculator, we get L equals 0.99 or about one meter. The length of the pendulum here then is one meter. Just like any other equation, you can check your answer by plugging that number back into what you got. We can plug back in two equals two pi times the radical of 0.99, our answer, divided by 9.8. And if we, got, if we did it correctly, it should be a correct equation. So 2 should equal 2, which it does. So we got the right answer. Let's look at one more radical word problem. The equation d equals 1.2 times the square root of height gives the distance d in miles that a person can see to the horizon from a height h in p. David hikes up Long's Peak in Rocky Mountain National Park almost every weekend. Some days he doesn't make it all the way to the top. One day he hikes up only 3,564 feet and can see only half as far as he does when he's at the top. How far can he see when he's at the top if Long's Peak is 14,259 feet high? Let's first decide what we're trying to solve for and then what we know. We're trying to find the distance he sees while at the top, or d in the equation, and we know h, the height of Long's Peak, it's given. We also know that when he hikes up only 3,000 feet, the distance is half what it normally is. That's the same as saying d over 2, half. Now we can make an equation. d over 2 equals 1.2 times the square root of the distance he sees when at that height of 3,564. We just want to solve for d. So we multiply both sides by 2 and get d equals 1.2 times the square root of 3,564, all of that times 2. We plug that into a calculator and get d equals 143. That means that David can see about 143 miles when he's at the top of Long's Peak.